Yeah, they're a blast come Independence Day for us, but fireworks are frightening to many pets. Some ways you can take the stress out of your furry friends' 4th of July celebrations coming up. <laughs> are you prepared to protect your pets in case of a wildfire? You need a plan, even for the biggest of animals. Also coming up, triple digit temperatures and your pet's health. Experts weigh in with potential life-saving advice. It's a Petapalooza in this edition of Inside Look. Hello and welcome to another Inside Look. I'm Sean Boyd. If you like animals, well, this show is for you. Triple digits are knocking on our door. So it's about the right time to think about our furry members of the family. And no, I'm not talking about your uncle with the uh, hairy back. Mm -mm. We're talking, of course, about your pets. They have needs too when they're exposed to summertime heat. Now we met up with the good people at the Sacramento SPCA for some advice. We will take in about 13,500 animals this year, uh, homeless animals just here at the Sacramento SPCA alone. We do adoptions, we do dog training, we have a free behavior helpline, we run um, a series of summer camps which are going on right now. We have a growing number of services for both humans and animals in the greater Sacramento region. We're at the Sacramento SPCA on Florin Perkins Road in Sacramento. Things that people should be on the lookout for, uh, signs of heat exhaustion include if temperatures rise above say 103, that's a serious condition. Um, people should be on the lookout for animals with excessive panting, uh, drooling, bright red gums, lethargy, indicate that an animal could be experiencing heat stress. If you do suspect that your animal is experiencing heat stress, we recommend that you uh, cool that animal down, not with ice cold water, but with cool water, um, a hose, uh, a kiddie pool um, with some water in it. Immediately alert your veterinarian and get that animal in, because even if the animal starts to uh, show that they're feeling better, um, there still could be lingering after effects of, of that heat exhaustion. Five things that I think people should watch for in the summer First and foremost, keep them out of the car, bring them in the house. If they must be outside, keep them cool. Watch for fleas and ticks. Um, watch for other people's animals. Watch for those, you know, watch for the animal in the parking lot. Keep an eagle eye out for animals that might be under, under duress uh, in a heated car. Um, and know the signs of heat stress. Know your animal well enough to know if they're showing symptoms of um, of heat stress or um, heat exhaustion. Solid advice. Now, speaking of animals and hot weather, Monica Vargas and Phoebe hanging out with us here in the Cal OES newsroom where it's nice and cool and while things are heating up outside. Hey, Phoebe. Hi, Monica. Hey. So, yep, it sure is warming up outside and Phoebe is loving being here in the air conditioned Cal OES newsroom. But have you ever wondered what animals do to stay cool once they are outside in the heat? Well, we're about to tell you. Here are some fun facts and cool ways that animals keep cool. Dogs like Phoebe pant to cool down, dissipating heat as water vapor. Coyotes and foxes also use the same method. Elephants like to cover themselves with dust or mud. And tigers, they like to hang out and lie down in ponds and rivers. Jackrabbits use their ginormous ears for temperature regulation. And pigs, well, they like to roll in the mud, and I can't say that I blame them. Hot weather is something that we have can anticipate with day's notice, but is your pet ready for something short notice like an emergency evacuation? Later on, we'll give you tips on how you can prep your pet. Sean? All right, thanks, Monica, Phoebe. All right, so, uh, You've likely seen them in parking lots nearly everywhere you go lately. Fireworks stands, they're a 4th of July tradition, but it's one that can turn your terrier into a terrified ball of fur if you don't take some steps to reduce their stress. Here's Jonathan Goodell. Have you bought your Piccolo Pete's? What about your family packs? Remember, before you do that, nearly 70% of firework related injuries occur within a month of the 4th of July. It's easy to get lost in the beauty and pageantry of fireworks, but they can also be dangerous to your health and a potential fire hazard to your property. All legal fireworks must have the state fire marshal's seal on it. If it goes up into the air or explodes, it's clearly illegal. Nearly 700 people are injured by fireworks on the 4th of July alone. And don't forget about your pets. 
they need special care as well. The number one thing we encourage is make sure your pet is microchipped because if they do get out, we can reunite you with them immediately. One of the biggest mistakes is not disposing of fireworks correctly. Never put hot fireworks in the garbage. <laughs> Welcome to my little city, or as I like to call it, my Noah's Ark in the desert. Yeah, we met that gentleman, Mr. Dave Gross, the animal's volunteer coordinator at San Bernardino County's Fairgrounds Animal Shelter during the Blue Cut Fire two years ago. Dave helped curb the crisis when evacuees struggled to find shelters for their pets of all shapes and sizes. Now the shelter grew to house hundreds of animals in just a matter of two days. Luckily though, they were able to accommodate them, but many of the evacuees did not have a plan for their pets. But I know one person who most likely does, Monica Vargas. She's back once again with more on this very important reminder, Monica. Yep, we're back and you can bet that we sure do have our emergency plans. And what about you? Are you ready for the next emergency? And did you remember to prep your pet? Would you be ready to evacuate with your pets on a moment's notice? So let's not forget about our four-legged friends in those emergency plans. They're affected by disasters just like the rest of us. Here are some tips to get you started. Know your risks. Include your pet in your family emergency evacuation plan. Have an emergency kit for your pet too. Include pet food, water, medications, blankets, and anything else they may need. Toys are a good thing to bring along too. Have an animal carrier and a leash. Make sure your pet has tags with contact information. Be familiar with local shelters. And if you have large animals such as horses, preparing before a disaster is of utmost importance and it may require a little bit more planning. Start making those emergency plans today. And to learn more about how to prep your pets, whether they're big or small, Contact your local Office of Emergency Services, Animal Shelter, or Animal Control Office. Sean? All right. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, Phoebe. Well, that does it for us. We hope you enjoyed this edition of Inside Look, and we hope you learned a little bit as well. For everyone here at Cal OES, I'm Sean Boyd. Thanks so much for watching. Visit our online newsroom at oesnews.com to learn more about this program and get the latest news and information from our team. Don't miss our next video on your Facebook timeline. Like our page and you'll get the latest posts as they happen. If you're an Instagram user, you can see the latest snapshots by following our Cal OES Instagram account. And Twitter users can get instant access to our tweets from across the state by following Cal OES.